Hi, I'm Sarah Hoffman, and I am your Technology Integration Specialist. Welcome back to school, and for our new teachers, welcome. So in this video, I'm gonna show you Google Bard and some other AI that's built into Google already. Some of it you probably already know, but some of it might be new. Um, artificial intelligence, or AI, has been all the talk all summer, and um, Google Bard is not blocked for us and it's not blocked for the students either. So it's really important that you know that it's out there and um, down the road, I'd like to have discussions about how we can use it in the classroom. Um, I use Google Bard all the time. It's improved quite a bit since when it uh, first launched. So, um, all right, let's get started. So I'm gonna start explaining what Bard is and how you can get it. It's B-A-R-D. Not sure where they got that name, but hey, whatever it is what it is um, and then if you want to stick around I'm going to talk about auto auto draw and there's interview warm-up so it is an artificial intelligent chatbot that you can practice interview questions voice typing Google images I'm going to show how you can do a reverse Google image um, search and yeah so that's what I'm going to go over so first thing we have to get to Bard with Google, you can always get to any Google product by typing in the name of the product and then .google.com. So classroom.google.com, bard.google.com. So that is how you're gonna get to it. So here is bard.google.com. So now I have to say, I'm recording this at on August 11th, 2023 at 1.04 p.m. So some things might change by the time you look at this. All right, so BARD is a artificial intelligence. It uses a large language model. And if you think about that, it is being trained on the internet, which Google is the internet to me. That's where I go to. I don't go to Bing. Um, I go to um, BARD. It is up to date, which is really nice. If you're familiar with ChatGPT, um, the free version, everything, it's, it's trained up to 2021, I think. So um, if you're going on vacation and you wanna know prices of restaurants in the area, um, ChatGPT is not gonna have that up-to-date information, but BARD is very up-to-date. Now for you, when you go into BARD, you have a new chat. Um, let's put in a prompt that's more school-related. The more information you give to BARD or ChatGPT, the better information you're gonna get back. So this is a pretty um, simple prompt. Explain what a metaphor is and give examples. So, and then, so I type it in. I could also speak into the microphone. So let me delete that and I'm just gonna say, explain what a metaphor is and give me some examples. So there we go. And then I'm gonna click this submit button. Looks like a little um, paper airplane. All right, here's the magic. And then here is the response. Metaphor is a figure of speech. Now, wait, I don't wanna read it. How about if I just click right here and I will listen to it? A metaphor is a figure of speech that compares two things that are not literally alike but have something in common. Metaphors are often used to create vivid imagery or to add depth to a piece of writing. Here are some examples of metaphors. The road ahead is a dark tunnel. The road is not literally a tunnel, but it is difficult to see what lies ahead. She is. So it's nice because it gives the example and then it explains why it is a metaphor. So pretty amazing, huh? Um, and then it gives some examples, and I didn't even ask for this, from famous works of literature. Now, if you notice up here, view other drafts. So this is the first draft, but let's say I wanna see some other ones. So this one, and this one does not give me the examples from literature, okay? And it gives, does it give me the same examples? It gives me some, but it's a little shorter, you know, a little more succinct. <laughs> Um, and then this one gives me just some different examples. All right, so let's see what else we can do with this. 
<clears throat> I'm going to go back to draft one. I do like that it gives the examples from famous works of literature. Now, down here, I can help Google out by giving some um, feedback. So I could say, yes, this really, what, this is exactly what I wanted. Um, or I could say it's a bad response. I can also modify the response. So see that little, it looks like a little fretboard. We usually see that in the search bar. So if I click this, it's gonna give me the option to resubmit. So they'll give me another, um, another response. Um, and maybe I want it shorter or I want it longer. Or maybe I'm like, mm, I still don't understand, which, you know, you think about our students that maybe need some little help with what is the metaphor we just talked about it in school but maybe i'm like you know what i want a little a little uh, simpler more casual or more professional so the more casual and more professional that might come into play if you are asking a bard to write a letter to parents so maybe you're like write a letter to parents welcoming them to the new school year and stress the importance of attendance and then it spits back something. And then you could say, you know what, let's make it a little more casual or more professional. So very cool. So let's go with this. I'm gonna click on the simpler one just so you can see. And notice it wipes out the other ones. Sure. Um, and then. Sure, a metaphor is a way of comparing two things that are not alike, but have something in common. It is like a shortcut that helps us to understand something by relating it to something else that we are more familiar with. Now, it this it also has more uh, draft examples. <clears throat> Love is a battlefield. I like that. Uh, oh, that's the same one. So, all right. So we've got that. Some other things that you can do is you can share this. We Google loves sharing things, so I could share this. So the headline is what your prompt was. So if I want, like maybe I want to clean that headline up a little bit, what is a metaphor? I like it. So now I'm going to choose that, what is a metaphor, and then let anyone with the link see what you selected. You can remove blah, 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 blah. All right, so I'm going to create a public link. And there we go. So I can post it to Facebook, Twitter, which is now X, Reddit, or LinkedIn, or I can just copy that link and let me see what that looks like when I drop that link in. Cool. So, and then you could share that with, I don't know, with your class or with your boss or friend or a teacher. You can share it. Google's all about sharing. Sharing is caring. And then if you notice right here, I can just Google it. It will show related search topics. So if I click on any of these, it's gonna open up a new window and it's gonna bring me to, um, to our Google search page. All right, so we always know that the skinny snowman, so if you're new to my videos, I call the little three dots skinny snowman because I just think it looks like a skinny snowman. We always know there's good things in the skinny snowman. So if we click on it, we will see, we can copy this response so if you are asking Bard to help you with an email, help you compose an email, you can copy it and then put it into um, your Gmail. And of course, you know, it's a starting point and you're gonna add your voice to it. Um, you could report a legal issue, <laughs> but you can co um, copy that and, um, and then paste it wherever you want. And as we notice right here, Bard was just update. So let's take a look at some BARD updates. Um, BARD is now available in 40 new languages, including Arabic, beautiful. Um, Google Lens, you can upload images. Ooh, let's play with that. We just played with the reading responses out loud. Pinned and recent threads. You can now pick up where you left off and organize them according to your needs. We've added the ability to pin conversations. All right, I just gotta figure out where that is. Sorry. Um, share with others, five new options to help you modify, got it. Um, and it will write code, which is crazy. It will write code for you. 
All right, let's go back to Bard. I can see Bard activity. Let's see. Hmm. And auto delete. Delete any activity older, older than 18 months so we can go in and we can change that. We could just say don't auto delete. I'm going to do that. Uh, oh, wait. Okay, confirm. Because I don't want it to go away. Um, and then it shows the history. Nice. Cool, cool. All right, let's go back to Bard. I'm going to do a new chat because I want to try this new feature where I can add a, um, got it? Of course, I probably should have read that. I want to upload a, f uh, a picture. Okay, here's a picture of my cat. All right, so I uploaded a picture of my cat. <clears throat> Excuse me. And now I'm asking it to um, write a caption for this picture. Let's see. I've never done this before. Drum roll. Um, let's read these. Here are some funny captions for the picture of your cat, Rufus. Rufus is asserting his dominance over the chair. No one sits on his chair but him. Rufus is plotting his next move. He's definitely up to something. Rufus is just chillin'. He's got all the time in the world. Rufus is judging you. He knows you've been slacking off on your cat duties. Rufus is saying, I'm the king of this cat. All right, let's view some other drafts. <laughs> nice. So as you can tell from the picture, Rufus is not liking the little bow on his head, which no one mentioned the bow on his head, which is interesting. But you can tell his mouth is open. He's a little grr, um, which is very unlike Rufus. Um, anyway, I think we caught him in mid meow. Um, but love this. This is amazing. Cool. All right. So this is Bard. I'm sorry this is a little rough video, but I want to get something out on the PD menu um, for Monday. Okay, so if you just wanted to hear about Bard, you are good. Um, but if you want to hear about some more, hang around. So let's continue on. All right, if you're still here, here are some other Google things that are out there. This one is called AutoDraw. So AutoDraw.com. This is a Google experiment. So um, even though it doesn't say .google.com, it is a Google exper experiment. And... Um, so let me just show you what this is. So auto draw. All right, so auto draw right there. If you hover over the little um, magic looking pencil, uh, of course, if anyone knows me, you know what I'm gonna draw already. I'm gonna draw a picture of a cat. So as I'm drawing, Google AI is trying to figure out what I'm drawing. So up here, they give me some um, options. So did you mean a tomato? Uh, no. So here are different cats that I can choose from. It's also, they've got sun, they've got a pig, all this stuff. But right there is a cat. And then I can go over here to the select tool and I can move this. I can make it bigger. I can make it smaller. And I can continue to draw. So if I click on this one, that is a free form draw. So Oh, goodness. Okay, so I'm drawing a little, um, put a little body on my cat, I, and then I can, can I erase? Where's my erase? Okay, we need an erase. <laughs> we need an erase tool. Uh, it's probably here somewhere. If I want to um, make the line thicker, I can make it thicker. Um, I can change the color. Um, I can make a shape. Oops, shape and a shape. Remember the select, select tool. Um, then I can go back to auto draw and maybe I want to put a house next to my cat. So there we go. Go back to the select tool. I want the house to be uh, purple. Let me see if I can lasso this whole thing. There we go. Also put text. So um, I could just type in 
And then look at this. We've got the hamburger menu right here. Always, always click on that because that gives us options. I could start all over. I could download this. I could share it. So Google loves to share stuff. So I could copy the link and then I could go over here and paste. And here is my picture. So I could um, put that in Google Classroom, email it to the teacher. All right, so this is AutoDraw, real quick, super quick demo of AutoDraw. All right, the next thing is called Assisted Melody, and this is Google Arts and Culture. If you are new to Google Arts and Culture, spend a half an hour and just check it out. There's so much good stuff. They have a bunch of experiments in Google Arts and Culture, and this is an experiment. So I'm gonna click Launch Experiment, and if you're a music teacher, you're gonna love this. It, so you can, um, so they got Bach, Mozart and Beethoven. And you just drop a note on this um, scale. I don't know, I think that's called a scale. Um, I'm just gonna put stuff all over, oh darn it. So I'm putting stuff all over there and, and then I can hit play. I can hit play and you can see how um, how it plays in the style of Bach. Hang on, let me pause. Okay. So if you click Bach, they'll play it in the style of Bach. If I click Mozart and hit play, whoop, okay, and hit play. I'm gonna turn this up a little bit. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna hit play. And then I can do Beethoven and and then something else fun you could click this harmonize and it it kind of goes crazy but anyway if you're a music teacher you might like that this next tool is called interview warm-up so you can s practice for your next interview um, practice key questions, get insights about your answer, and get more comfortable interviewing. So this is how it works. I'm going to click start practicing, and you put what field you want to practice for. Uh, oops, let me go back. Um, so let's just do general. After five interview questions, when you're done, review your answers and discover insights. So I can go here and see all of the questions that they're gonna ask me. Um, and I could practice those ahead of time. Um, here's questions about background. And then situational. But just having these questions alone is nice because I've had people reach out because um, maybe they have a counseling you know, interview or something. They're like, what are some, some questions that I should prepare for? Um, and here, these are just general questions, but you could go back and select, um, let's say, data analytics. So, uh, and if I wanna see some questions based on that, um, I could practice those questions. So this is interview warm up, very cool. Um, and you could actually practice. So it goes back and forth. So here's what it looks like. Hi, Hi. let's, let's practice, practice an interview. An interview. Please, tell Please tell me why, me why you, you would be a good, be a good fit, fit for, for this role. role. And then I could either type my answer and notice it gives little uh, encouraging um, things or I could just um, click answer and then speak into the microphone. I would be a great fit for this role because I'm amazing. It's got my answer, oh wait, oh, let me say I'm done. <laughs> got it, got it. thanks. <laughs> Darn it. Um, let's see, you can use this button to edit. So let me edit and let me see if I can delete that, I'm not sure. Oh good, I can. Okay, so now I can go on to the next question. Please tell me about, tell me about some, some of your strengths and weaknesses. And weaknesses. 
and then I could answer. And then when I'm done, it will look at the answers and it will give me feedback. So after you answer all these questions, then it gives you insights. All right, this is the first time I've actually played with this, but it looked like something cool. I could save my answers, I could practice again, and then it will give you more insights. Right over here with the skinny snowman, always wonderful skinny snowman, it can give you some interview tips, send feedback to Google, and then if you need any um, microphone help. All right, the next thing I wanna cover, which you guys might already know about, is voice typing in Docs. And to get to voice typing, just go to Tools and Voice Typing. And you just, it shows this little uh, microphone there. You click here, <clears throat> and then you start to speak. Google Bard has a lot of wonderful features, period. Some of these features are, it will give you multiple drafts, feedback, you can then do Google searches, you can copy the responses and paste into another document. When, and then when you're done, <laughs> notice it keeps going. So I'll do this after a meeting. I'm not the best typist, so I will just go in here and just basically talk and um, explain what happened in a meeting or a PD or something like that. And then I save it and put it in uh, the file that, that I need to come back to. This is also great for students, obviously. I think if I say comma when I'm doing it, let me see. Here's my list of groceries, colon. Oh, there we go, yeah. Okay, so <laughs> up in there. So you see when I said colon, it put in a colon, and then if I would have said comma, feedback, comma, Google search, uh, it would have put that in. The next one I talk about is Google Images. So if you just go images.google.com, that will take you straight to Google Images. So if you know that you're only looking for, you know, the only thing you wanna do in Google is to find an image, just go straight to images.google.com and then search. But one thing that you can do is right here, you can search by image. So let's say you're out hiking and you see a crazy stinking flower. You have no idea what it is. You take a picture of it. Now on your phone, you can actually do this, but you could do it here also. So you can drag an image. Um, so if I had an image, you know, down here, um, or I could upload a file. Oh, there it is, crazy flower. So what Google will do, this is called Google Lens, lens.google.com actually. And it notice it's doing the little dots right there, dot, 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 is it's looking at the image and now it is finding images. So here's National Geographic, if I click on that, and it tells me all about the flower. So I use this sometimes, like if I see someone in a really cute dress um, and I want the dress, I will, um, I will take a picture of it and bring it into Google Lens. <laughs> I know that's creepy, but, um, but it works. And it'll show me shopping where I can find it. Oh, look right here. I could buy one of these crazy flowers for $71. Woohoo! So that is Google Lens, but you can get to it. So what I did is I just did um, images.google.com and then you click on the, so here's images.google.com. You just click on this little, um, looks like a, a uh, looks like a little camera. And then it's gonna ask you to upload a file and then you can uh, upload a picture. All right, the last one that I want to do is translate.google.com, which is Google Translate. So what you can do is you can uh, type in anything or speak. So I could say, oh, allow. Hello, my friend. And then stop. And I can pick from any language and it will show the translation and I can listen. 
أهلا يا صديقي. So that is Google Translate, but you can also upload images. Translate it. The one thing I like is you can upload documents. So here's the s'mores instruction. I want to translate it from English to Spanish. Okay, now it says download translation. It makes a new file. So it takes these instructions and it, uh, translate this, it translates this whole PDF to uh, Spanish. Pretty cool. All right, so that was a quick review of BARD and some other AI tools that uh, Google has for us. There's a lot more on the, on the horizon, so I will keep you up to date on those tools that are, that are coming up. And uh, let me know if you need anything. Have a great day.